Um, it's my first time and I can't see anybody, so please be kind. Um, my name is Joanna and I am a celiac. It's been 354 days since I last ate gluten. Um, <laughs> I was diagnosed last December and I clearly remember sitting in the very plush offices of my specialist in a very private, private hospital in Brisbane. And I was staring out the window wondering if today was going to be the day that I would actually find out what was wrong with me. Um, is today going to be the day that I will work out why I've been feeling sick all of my life? And so I'm staring out the window watching, you know, the world go by and there is my very expensive specialist uh, saying something I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I believe he diagnosed me with celiac disease and uh, there was a lot of paper shuffling and then a lot of uh, throat clearing and he was on to me. He worked out I wasn't actually listening. So then proceeded the lecture and there was no wheat, no rye, no oats, no barley, no, 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 no soy sauce, no balsamic vinegar, no icing mixture, no ice cream, no, 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 and no. So, Dr. Mono Salavik proceeds to tell me all of the things that I can no longer have. And um, I steal a glance at a husband who has dutifully accompanied me to set appointment, and he is slowly turning a paler shade of ashen. <laughs> um, I am from Eastern Europe, from a country where we bake a lot uh, of things and, um, and therefore my husband eats a lot of things. So um, he is slowly spiralling into this world. So to break the obvious tension in the room uh, and to rub salt in husband's wound, I say to Dr. Monosyllabic, uh, does this mean I have to make two lots of meals or can he just not eat gluten either? <laughs> As you can imagine, that worked out really well. Um, so there we are all staring at one another and uh, it's becoming rather awkward. So to break the tension again, uh, I think, well, when am I actually going to start this? When, when, when? I mean, surely there must be like a transition period. <laughs> because I had kind of just done a week's worth of groceries and I didn't have to go <laughs> So, once again, in true form, Dr. Monosyllabic says, no, you start today, right now, when you leave this office. And then he proceeds to get up and open the door. So, uh, husband and I trot out into the reception area and pay our 30 pieces of silver for our doctor's knowledgeable time and stumble out into the glaring December sunshine. So, we sort of stand there for a while and look at one another, blinking away, because really, what else do you say when your whole life has changed in the blink of an eye? So we proceed to get in the car and do the most obvious thing that anybody would do, and that is drive to the nearest health food store. Uh, and I've never been in one of these places, and uh, it was an eye-opening experience. <laughs> uh, we turn up and uh, I see aisles and aisles and aisles of these clear plastic bins filled with nuts and legumes and chickpeas and all sorts of dried things I'd never clapped eyes on in before. Anyway, so we wander around and uh, to say that we're feeling a little overwhelmed is an understatement. Neither one of us really knows what we're looking for. Uh, so I think, right, fuck up. You're not the only one in the world with this disease. Surely it can't be that hard. Let's start with something easy. Bread. How hard can it be? Anyway, we scour the shelves and we look high and low and in amongst the legumes and the chickpeas and there's no bread. So I find the uh, spotty-faced 12-year-old who professes to be in charge of the store. <laughs> and uh, on a side note, somebody who spends so much time in the presence of purely organic products 
ought to have that acne under control. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I say to him, look, where do you hide the gluten-free bread? And he looks me up and down with a lot of derision and says, as though I'm the world's biggest moron, uh, it's in the freezer. Right, of course it is. Thank you very much. Off I go. So, husband and I find said freezer at the back of the store and we peer inside and lo and behold, there's bread. There's gluten-free bread. And I am excited. This is the first foray into my new life. And then I slowly start to realise that the bread is very small. <laughs> the bread is very small and very square. So the small and square bread is also vacuum sealed. And the small square vacuum sealed bread is also frozen. So I'm looking around. Surely there must be free range gluten free bread. <laughs> there must of irregular shapes and sizes. Uh, made maybe that day? No. No, and no. There is no such thing in this certain store. And so once again, I'm relegated to embracing the change that has become my life. And I turn to husband, whose will to live is slowly fading. Uh, and I see him pointing. And his mouth is opening and closing, but there's no sound coming out. And I slowly realise he is in fact pointing at the price tag. Twelve dollars. Twelve freaking dollars for a frozen brick. So I scrape the remains of my husband off the floor and grab the brick and put it under my arm. Push him towards the cash register where I pry the $12 from his cold, steely grip and give it to our spotty-faced friend. So, once again, husband and I are outside, blinking in the glaring December lights. And needless to say, neither one of us really said a lot on the drive home. But that was 354 days ago. My life is so much better now. Um, I do occasionally eat gluten-free bread, and I certainly feel a lot better than I used to. And I know that husband looks forward to the nights when I'm not home, so he can eat as much gluten as he wants. <laughs> but all in all, um, if you ever do see me out and about, um, I will be the one who lingers just a little too long outside of the bakery where there is irregular shaped fresh bread on offer. Thank you.